the meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lucy, will you do the roll call? Ginger Shank? Here. Frankie Schwartz? Here. Sarah James? Here. Jeff Schneider? Here. Tim Dwyers? Here. And Rich Barton? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. We will need a motion to amend or adopt the agenda. I make a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. I second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda as it's presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next, I wanna draw people's attention to our board norms. We used to kind of read these aloud, and I'm just gonna do a really quick synopsis of them tonight. Prepare for board meetings, listen to understand, engage in purposeful discussion, consider all opinions, make evidence-based decisions, and demonstrate professional and ethical governance. Okay, next we have um, recognitions. Let me follow this so I don't get lost. Sure, our first recognition is a student who made the All-State Orchestra, which is a big honor, but uh, Dr. Ross is gonna do the official uh, introduction. Okay, so it, it's hard just to talk about Shelby when we talk about the band, because the band has done outstanding. Um, you know, it's certainly in terms of numbers, it's, uh, you know, the high school's most successful program, maybe most successful program in the district, you know, just in terms of the students that get involved and the students that succeed. Uh, Mrs. Friedman, the number of kiddos that, that went this year to all- And nine audition for the All-State Ensemble. Okay. Which is huge. Which is, which is incredible. But um, tonight, uh, we're, we're here to recognize Shelby. Um, so she, uh, last year, uh, was a part of- The All-State Band. Okay. And this <laughs> year has even gone past that. Um, so she has achieved third chair overall in the All-State Orchestra. Okay, so there's literally maybe two, maybe two, better uh, instrumentalists in her instrument um, in my entire state. Um, and I will tell you that um, I had the, the privilege of being at Blackhawk Middle School's uh, Veterans Day Assembly this year. And um, so they announced Shelby was going to play Taps. They actually announced that she was going to play with Mrs. Friedman. I didn't see Mrs. Friedman up there. But um, <laughs> Shelby got up there and play taps, and I will tell you, you will never get 700 middle schoolers in one place and have it be that quiet. And um, the veterans stood up, and I, I don't know if they kept a dry eye. I certainly could not listening to Shelby play. It was that gorgeous, and uh, it cost me a free donut because um, I, I could not stick around for that. <laughs> and, um, so she owes me a donut, but it's, uh, but it's um, outstanding and an outstanding, outstanding representative of our district. Congratulations. And I'd, I'd like to add to that too, that her and a group of friends and Ms. Friedman all came to the Wreaths Across America on a very cold Saturday oh, morning nice. and uh, volunteered their time to play taps there as well and did a phenomenal job. So they do a lot for the community and the, that's, uh, so that's awesome. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I said yeah. Okay. Right. Congratulations. Congratulations. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> and we have another celebration tonight. Uh, we have Miss Pettis with us and was named Missouri Assistant Softball Coach of the Year. That's a tremendous honor and we're, we're lucky to have her in our on our district and, and working with our softball program. So, Ms. Pettit, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any patrons? 
patron comments tonight? No. Okay. And those that just came from the recognitions, you're welcome to stay for the whole meeting if you like, but you're also welcome to uh, <laughs> not. So thank you for coming. And congratulations, guys. <laughs> well, proud of all of you. Okay, so next on the agenda we have the superintendent reports. We have the CSIP first. Sure, we'll pull that up here. Okay, so this is our comprehensive guide. Every January, we kind of go in depth of where we are with it. We, we go over quarterly, but January is kind of our big uh, dive into it. And I was informed that this week that uh, Desi was reviewing her CSIP for MSIP 6. I've not got any feedback on it, so hopefully I can give you some information on that down the road on how we, how we did. Um, so I just don't have anything, but they are looking at it apparently, so they're following through on that. Uh, so uh, the process, just as a reminder, uh, we had a 36-member committee. Uh, we reviewed the existing CSIP from last time and the focus areas. We sent surveys out, uh, and then the committee divided into subcommittees. We reviewed information from the survey. Using this information, subcommittees uh, developed goals, and the administration then created action steps. And so I don't have on our presentation all the action steps and everything for each goal, but I can kind of tell you the results of those goals when we get into and kind of what we're talking about. And, and stop me at any time, and we can just have a conversation about what's, what's going on. Uh, but kind of progress right now. Uh, so goal one was, uh, focus area first one was student achievement. That, that is always going to be the forefront of how are our students learning. And so uh, in 2021, uh, so the first goal was we'll increase A plus eligibility rate by 3%. And in 2021, uh, we had uh, 24% uh, when you include all the students. Uh, and in 2022, 19%. And so I think I have those numbers backwards. I think this year is 20, 20, 24% and then 19% in 2021. Uh, wait, I'm reading that wrong. I've got 2022 in two spots, sorry. Okay, yes, so 2021, I, that's what I thought in my head. I was like, it went 19% and then 24% in 2022, so we went up by 5%. Um, well, a lot of the focus in this area is on attendance because uh, they have to have a certain attendance rate to qualify, so we're always focusing on attendance. This year we brought back our, our incentives and attendance and that sort of thing that we had taken out during the COVID years, uh, and then we're bringing those back. Uh, and then also uh, math is a, a major focus. Uh, proficiency level in Algebra 1 is a challenging goal for some students. I know Dr. Ross worked very, very hard in his years in high school, and they're continuing those processes to put those um, things in place uh, to, to help kids. But those are two of the main focus areas for uh, A-plus eligibility. Uh, reading levels, we're not quite there at the 75%. Uh, we're at 71.8, uh, which tells me that 75% is a good goal. Uh, one of the things that we're working on for reading is we're, we're starting a process of transitioning away from Lucy Calkins reading. Uh, I don't know if you guys are paying attention to this. There's kind of some reading wars out in the world right now. Uh, people have very, very strong feelings on the way you should teach reading. Uh, we are. We are in the process of, of kind of transitioning away from Lucy Caucus. We're still using that, but our focus is moving toward uh, the letters training, which is more the science behind the reading. Uh, so as that starts to get implemented, which is kind of a long training process, we have a few cohorts doing it now, um, and so we've got some collaboration happening around that. But the letters training is, the, the research behind that is a little bit stronger than what's behind the Lucy Caucus. Um, so although we've had Lucy Caucus for a decade, and, and been good for us. We think we could do better by moving to the letters model. So that'll, that'll be, uh, uh, we hope to see that have an impact on our reading scores. Then also the other thing that we're looking at is how do we actually determine what's on reading level in K-8. So we have DRA and we have um, Ames Web. Those are two assessments that we kind of use different on both grade levels. So the assessment committee this year is going to be looking at how can we be more consistent K-8 um, and, and what can we do? So, so we might see some changes in our assessment plan on actually how we measure reading levels. But so, so we're really are we're doing a lot of work around reading. Um, you know, our literacy coach that we use Title II funds to, to have is doing a wonderful job of supporting our buildings. And um, I, I think we're going to see that number continue to move. Uh, and where we're seeing success is our, our when kids are in seventh and eighth grade, 
we have a very high level of students that are on grade level, like 80 to 83 percent, and and then it's our lower grades that aren't. And so what that's showing me is that we are getting kids to where they need to be, uh, but it's just taking us a minute to, to get there. So um, so I think that's positive. We're not hitting the goal, but that's kind of what we're we're working on. Uh, goal three is our longitudinal math system, uh, K-12. Uh, we are not anywhere close to getting that one done. So just uh, be honest, straightforward with you on this. It's one thing you can always get from me. Um, we are still waiting on some data from Canvas. We've talked about our file. We've got an email this week saying that we were supposed to get our, the data back in, uh, in January, the file that we could use. Now they said there's problems with that, and so they're hoping April at this point. So as soon as we get that back from Canvas, we should be in a good spot. We've got all the assessment, people are giving all the data there, we're just not able to bring it back to build a system that allows parents, teachers, students to see longitudinally how they're doing math-wise, and hopefully we're seeing increases. So uh, just continue to be patient with that. So that's student have, achievement, but so I yeah. I have a question about mm -hmm. that one. So this goal number three, it has it to be set for the 2023 school year. Yep. And so um, I guess, because it seems it covers further than that. I yeah. You just like complete it and then it just keeps getting say, said met, or is there gonna be more goals after that for math? Well, uh, for this year, for the CSIP itself, we'll just say met at that point, but we'll still be doing more things. And then the next CSIP goal, if we get it built, you know, that's the thing. So uh, the next CSIP, then we'll take a look at it, say, okay, that one's met, let's take it off and put new goals in. Um, but but this year would be met. But we'll, we'll continue to do more with it, even yeah. though it's just not. It's just, this is the three-year goals, CSIP. Mm -hmm. We hope to have this done this year, um, but I, I'm, I'm becoming less confident yeah. that, that it will be done. Uh, so, but hopefully in April I'll be able to say, "Hey, we're there, we did it." But right now we're 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 waiting on some outside entities to get it done. Right, it's really out of your hands at this right point. Now. There's nothing yeah. we can do to force that. And it has been fairly frustrating uh, oh. with this because we had a system and they took it away, and now it's gone. And it's been two years, and they keep telling us every six months it's going to be next month or next quarter. Hadn't happened. So just keep, we're on the hook, I guess, still. Still waiting on that one. Uh, but because the reason we need that and the whole purpose behind that was to determine our kids on grade level for math. And so that's what we're really trying to identify is a grade level cutoff for math without creating more assessment on teachers. And so that's, that's really what we're trying to determine is where are our kids on math. Is, is are there other districts running into the same issue that they're not able to like figure out long range math or do, are, is, did we have this information when we were even evaluating? Right, exactly. So when we had the benchmark assessments of evaluate, and other, other places we purchased that and that was one of our budget cuts that we cut and we thought we'd be able to do it without it and we're, we're running into some roadblocks. So there. I guess it's something that we should consider mm -hmm. if like because that means that we've missed a couple years of right. having these these things, exactly. and, we, and, and it's not for lack of trying for us to do it on our own. Mm -hmm. But it is something I'm thinking that we might need to consider because yep. we're missing data, we're missing opportunity. For sure, for sure. Um, if if that's like the like the thing that we're needing. Sure. Like if this after this school year, if they're like, yeah, well, we still aren't able to get it to you, or we get it, we can't use it, then we're going to have to go to something like that. So. Um, I would prefer not to, so we can not have to have additional time outside the uh, instructional. I'd like to have it embedded in what we're already doing, so um, our, our kids aren't taking just more tests, just take more tests, just yeah. so we know where they are. I'd like to say, okay, we're giving them a test, why don't we use our own data to determine what level they're on, so we're not creating more work on people. Uh, but um, but that is an option that we might have to go to if, if we can't do it ourselves. But you're exactly right. Uh, so, uh, let's see here, uh, culture and climate for staff, uh, we've created our central uh, spot on our website, uh, so you can go to our website there and see all of our resources we have for uh, mental health, so that, that's good. Um, referrals, uh, we did not meet that, we're actually seeing an increase in behaviors this year, so we were last year at 94.2 and, and behaviors up this year. 92.2 and of course enrollment is up to the first if you remember first semester last year we had a lot of people that weren't in school a lot of virtual students enrollments up but this is a uh, well we're not but we are continuing to work with um, you know uh, what's it, uh, 
if you know Hearn, Missouri, or, or Ed Plus, I think it's Hearn, Missouri, that is working with our DCI program. We meet monthly with them to come out, review our data, and try to come up with district-wide um, procedures for handling discipline, uh, incentives, that sort of thing to see better behavior. But one thing we're not gonna do though is ignore behavior. Like if there's behaviors we're gonna we ask people to write them up, we want to address those. It's, what we're just hoping to do is change behavior of the students in the classroom, not just don't write people up because they don't want less referrals. That's not, that's not what this goal is about. It's, it's are we successfully changing behavior of students at school so we have less discipline problems. Uh, so we, did, we definitely don't want the message to be don't write up students. Like if students are misbehaving, we want that to be addressed. So not met right now on that. Uh, so anyway, uh, school culture and climate for staff. Uh, we did not retain 90%. Last year was a really bad year. As you recall, we you talked about that in September, so nothing really new here on that one. Uh, this is our lowest year since we've been on the four day week, for sure, because um, we were 88%, and then we had a lot of people left. Um, wages are, are way behind uh, Wright City at this point, so we still have to find some ways to do that in the next few years. Um, and then offer more mental health options for staff. What we're working on right now on that is we have out for bid our called ancillary insurance options like uh, cancer uh, insurance, uh, life insurance, uh, additional things that we don't have. And what I'm hoping is that those companies, whoever we pick, will be able to offer us some options through that that we could staff could electively purchase oh, and then at the same time um, work on what can we do internally to provide for staff as well. So hopefully we can give them more options to purchase if they would like, but at the same time, what can we do here internally? So hopefully those bids come back to the end of the month and we have some something to report on that. So before we move on. Yeah. Okay, so goal number two. I don't know, I wasn't in that subgroup. Right. And so I don't know, do you know why Wright City was chosen? Well, we had Wentzville before, and we're like, well, that's unrealistic. And so we thought we'd go to Wright City because Wentzville's top, top end is much higher than Wright City, so it is. So um, Wright yeah. City is paying more than Wentzville? No. 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 That large. For the top end, we're talking starting salaries. Right, so the goal would be all the way through. Uh, it says starting salaries. Oh, right, it does say start, yep. But, so right. starting salaries for Wright City is higher than Wentzville. It is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that might have changed since we put this in place at the time. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And so I... And they're in the county, we're competing in the county. I, yeah. Yeah. I thought at first you were asking yeah. if it was, but you're saying. Yeah, I was just looking at it. To, I've looked at it in the past, and then I looked at it today. Sure. Um, well, I know we're way behind a lot of people. It's $5,000 higher for starting salaries. Sure. At, if you're, I'm, and I didn't look at hourly, I was looking at teaching. Um, and so sure, what are they I at 42, I'm, are they at 42 or 41? I know Winslow's right around there too, about 40. We're one of the only ones that really aren't over 40 in, in, in an area. Some districts are gonna hitting 46 as a starting salary. I know, I know one district's up to 47, St. Louis County. Um, so we're, we're, we'll, we'll be at 36 without the grant money. So that's definitely a, an issue. Yeah, I'm pulling up right now. Um, it's, I don't like the idea of lowering the goal. I just wanted us to be a little bit more aware that yeah, we're saying in two yeah. years to possibly, so right now, if you have a bachelor's, so step one, yeah. bachelor's is 42,276. Yeah, and we're at 36. We're at, we're at 36 and then we're at 38. Right, with the grant. With the grant, and so, they're about four, yeah. four thousand more, and for a master's, it's forty-six. Yeah. Um, and, and both of those numbers are higher than starting at Wentzville. So. Sure. I think at the time that wasn't necessary when this was written. Yeah, I, I think Wentzville might have been slightly higher. I could be wrong on that, but I, I, they're the lowest because Wentzville's probably what are they at forty-one? Then do you know what theirs is right um, there? I'll look it up real quick. Yeah, I remember talking about it. I, one of the meetings earlier this year, I think, if I remember right, and I thought Wright City raised theirs this year because they were having trouble with finding the teachers, and, and, and that's what put them. In and the one of the big issues that we're going to have is Wright City is going to receive a lot more revenue of one of the largest projects in the state going into their school district, and so they're going to continue to have more 
dollars to work with <coughs> than we do. Their, their local tax effort, last, last I had looked, uh, was I believe $2,000 was $2, per student more than our local tax effort. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean tax rate, it just means that they have more uh, assessed value in their school district per student than we have in ours. And so that just creates um, more local revenue. I could be wrong. So I was literally just looking at the numbers earlier and I was on the phone with Ginger saying this. And so um looks like I am I'm wrong. So okay. this Bright City is a couple a, a couple hundred less than Hensville for the starting salary. They're pretty close though. So yeah. And then the masters is yeah, about less than a thousand more. So I I was wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think Put it in the minutes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, and I, and thanks for leaving it up, Sarah, and helping us clarify. But I, what, I, what I think uh, we're going to find is Wright City is going to continue to go. Because they're going to be able to afford it. They're going to have more revenue than we are. Um, and so that's, that is an absolute challenge for our district is how do we have competitive salaries? What are we going to do to pay competitively? Um, so it's something we definitely have to wrestle with. To, and that, that really needs to be a top priority of, mm -hmm. of paying our people as much as we can. But the thing is, we're not holding money back. And you know, I don't think anybody on the board thinks we're holding money back and start looking at our finances of how much, how, how far down we were. Uh, you know what? I might have clicked it different. I clicked it differently the second time. That, okay. was, last, that was actually last year's. I, oh, the second okay, time sure. I was talking about, I clicked the 2021 2022, and I just clicked yeah. just now. That was like, so. Not wrong. Who's we'll seen? Yeah. Black it off. No, the first thing I'm saying was correct. Yeah, I know. I'm teasing. Yeah, the first thing I said was correct for this salary. So if they were right. going, when they were writing the CSIP, it was off of the 2021 mm -hmm. Sure. And so it was a Slightly little bit less than Wentzville, and now it is more. And also, I think it's important for us to compete with districts in our own county. Like right. that's, yeah. That is who we're really battling for the best staff with. Um, and we work collaborative with Bright City. We're not mean to them. We like them. We're, we're not saying anything negative about them. Uh, but uh, we are, we all want the best staff, and so uh, to do that, we have to have the best salaries. So it's just that they're about five thousand more, right? Per start, and so I don't know again what the hourly and normally we've seen that data before. Sure. Sure. Yeah, we're we're behind. <laughs> like in all, I could pretty much commonly say in all areas we're behind. It's kind of like how much our Mondays work. Right. You know, like, right. If someone wants to work Mondays. Sure, and that's our incentive uh, is because we can't pay is to time, um, and so we would like to pay a little more competitive than we are. That's, that's for sure. So as we go into negotiations this year, just be mindful of that as we are uh, looking at what revenue we believe we're going to have, and whatnot, and then we'll, we'll talk more about that. But getting salaries up is it, it just has to be a priority in the, in the near future. Um, I know we've been saying that for years and years and years. Um, the plan is more revenue, so we've been very active with the Economic Development Council to try to bring in new businesses. American Food Groups is a great example. Just didn't land in our district. Um, you know, having a site a certified site in our in our district, which we which the Economic Development Council is working on, uh, north of um, as you saw in the paper, it was a uh, roundabout there by Rule King, north of there. That site is certified, shovel ready. That can attract a large company similar to AFG, hopefully as big. Uh, so you know, it, it's not not that we need to put all the, all the tax burden on our our local residences, our, our, our local taxpayers, individual taxpayers. We really have got to work with bringing in industry that works, and, and, and the way you do that is through our Economic Development Council, and, and ours is one of the most successful in the state. Uh, so I'm confident that in the future we will see some things going. But one of the first steps is getting a, a site certified, children ready site. So when people come in. They're like, hey, we've got sewer, fiber, water, all that stuff that you have to have um, is, is really the key. So we'll, we, it's important for us to continue to be part of that economic development um, work, and hopefully we'll, that will bear fruit in the future. That takes time. Any update on solar? Panels? Yep, so that's supposed to be going in this year. Finances are still kind of up in the air on that. Um, I don't have a lot to report publicly at this point on it. Uh, but, but that is, uh, as far as I know, still in, in motion. It's just a matter of <coughs> what's the revenue look like. Um, so, but yeah, that's definitely on the radar and has been since 
my vendor really is how do we get salaries up. Um, so parent community engagement, uh, two or three events. So we want to um, have a consistent academic platform that goes back to the longitudinal mass, same issue there. Once we get our file, I think we can start building that out. So we're, we're hopefully to have that done by uh, 2024. So um, hopefully the next year we'll get that. Um, then uh, buildings hosting an event, you know, it's been so great having families back in our schools regularly. That's been awesome this year. Uh, so that's definitely met. And the district will increase partnerships between business and community by 2025. And I think we're seeing that now. Actually, I had a zone conversation today with our high school marketing department and uh, some uh, local businesses about how we can partner for some, um, just how, how can they help market their business for them and how can our kids have authentic work uh, to do that. And so we've got some meetings set up with there. And, and so I'm excited to see that sort of partnership grow and the sort of things happen that our kids are actually doing real work uh, for, for our community because I think it benefits everyone. It benefits the, the businesses because they can maybe save some of their advertising costs. It benefits our kids who put some things on their resume and it gives them some authentic feedback of what's happening. So I think the more of that sort of stuff we can do is, is fantastic. So I'm happy to see this is really starting to move forward a little bit more. Uh, facilities and finance. Um, this year we're able to maintain our ratios, classroom size, we don't need trailers, so that's good. Um, an early childhood facility to allow for program expansion. Uh, we're in the process of that. We're not there yet, uh, but hopefully we'll get there. And then the average age of the bus fleet from 2014 to 2016, we'll be talking about that later on uh, by purchasing new buses. So hopefully that'll help us get closer to that goal. Uh, so that those are kind of where we're at right now with our goals. And so that's kind of the report. Report, yeah. Does anybody have any other questions about it? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the next item, board candidate update. Yes, we have uh, four candidates who have signed up for the board. We have um, Carolyn Sprags, uh, Frankie Schwartz, uh, Keith Harbison, and Rich Barton. So we'll have an election this year, and that, those are the candidates. And there's three seats, correct? Three seats, three seats. Okay. Three, three year seats. Next, we have the finance report. You guys are gonna be tired of me talking here. Uh, so uh, let's go through that real quick. Lucy's pulling that up for us. So we kind of see where things are. Okay, so um, okay, so uh, revenues are up slightly. Uh, and again, that's last year we received a bunch of federal money toward in the second semester, so that's why that's a little bit higher. Uh, expenses are almost exactly the same. I mean, how close can you get? <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, fund balances were up again because we we have the, the federal stimulus money that we're spending down, but that is uh, why our fund balances are up. As you can see here, um, last, you know, this year is the orange line, then we had the green and the blue line there. You saw from November to December a kind of positive slope where this year it was flat or, or negative. Uh, we just didn't get as much money uh, this December that we received. I was kind of surprised on that because personal property tax was up on most bills, uh, but the revenue didn't come in. So. I'm not too worried about it right now. Maybe just people paid their bills later than normal or, or the flow or the timing of the, when the check came. Uh, I was a little bit surprised. But when, if I look back prior to those two years, we actually saw a negative uh, downslope from November to December. So that's not out of the ordinary. Uh, maybe our, our abnormal years were the last two years. So you know, I'm, I'm not too worried about it right now. We will see a, a grow in, in January whenever uh, the big check comes in from the county. So that's what's going on there. Um, so revenues, um, so local money uh, is up, um, you know, from lunches and that sort of thing. Uh, then we have counties about the same, state is really close to the same, federal money is a lot less, uh, and so that's kind of where we are revenue-wise. So, so this year we are receiving, we have received less money than we did last year at this point uh, as a whole. 
Um, salaries are up a little bit, you know, benefits are up a little bit. Uh, purchase services is up quite a bit, and that's going to be our facility uh, for the food service facility. That's going to be the expenses that come out of the purchase services. So we expect that to be a lot higher this year once that's all said and done. And so we've made some payments on that. And the food service facilities come come along. If you haven't been by there, the walls are up. It's uh, it's going to be great. So uh, that's uh, that's why that's more expensive. And then supplies are almost exactly the same. So that's the story with those. And then uh, capital projects were at seven hundred seventy thousand, and that will increase again when we get our big check from the county. So that is where our money stands as this month. Does anybody have any questions or? Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. I move the approval of the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next, old business policy approvals. Yes, there's a lot of policies. Mm. Uh, so I'm not sure if anybody want to handle that, but we just need one motion to approve all of them. I wish you want to pull one out. Or... May I ask a question about one before? I mean, is it okay oh. to ask? Yeah, first. Do you, you have some questions too? Um, so I think it was DJF U1C.1. It's about purchasing. Um, I think this is the one that I was looking at that it just hit me as kind of a really big jump in how we do things. Um, Yes, and it has been 3,500, and it's jumping to 50,000. That seems like a huge jump to me. So 3,500 to extend is to 10,000 for that policy. It was up with the county government. Right, but this there. is the one before that. Okay. This was the so policy the before one was that. Yeah, this is from the MSBA recommendation, and when I look at it, it looks like they're taking this from the guidance, from the fiscal guidance for federal grant programs. So it's put out by the federal government, it looks like. So I think they're just following those guidelines. Now we can do whatever we want, of course. Am I, am I on the right policy? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I realize we don't, probably need to do sealed bids for something under 50,000. I think that was one thing they took out, but I I don't know. It's public money. I feel responsible, you know, making sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck and that we're using it as safely and responsibly as possible. And so I just feel like that's a huge jump yeah. in amounts. Does that make sense? That's just how well, it's done. Well, we've like, whenever we've had a new budget cuts, we've shaved things that are less than 50,000. Right. And so that means to me that we as a board care about purchases up, like around that amount or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's make sure we're the right part. It was DJ. Yeah. I, I caught that as well. That jump you, from thirty five hundred to fifty thousand just I mean, right. inflation is one thing. Right. That's <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's what you DJF U one C dot one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, there you go. All right, yeah, so we can just we can change that number to whatever you want it to be. If you like. Twenty thousand or something. I, I believe there's another policy that says it goes from thirty five to ten thousand, so I'd probably like right. to be consistent with those two right. policies. Right. I just didn't know why this one took such a huge jump. I don't have a great answer other than what they wrote at the top there. To mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if we want to make it something different, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I feel more well, comfortable these, with the these are federal funds, so does that make a difference? But it, 
I mean, not really. Does I mean, it say purchasing it would be purchasing. Like, it's you know, okay. we, we would want to. We would want to be consistent, regardless, probably, of our practices. But I, I think it would be fine. The other policy that talked about was, uh, I believe, the one below that. Right. <clears throat> talked about micro purchases up to ten thousand. So if we wanted to do that, that would be okay. Ten k. I'm more comfortable. Are the two policies linked, or they're totally separate things? Uh, what well, was an administrative procedure that they gave us? Uh, let's see here. No, I, I don't think they're tied directly, but they are both purchasing. Okay. Um, and, and really, if we could be consistent, that would be the best. <laughs> you know, so if we make them both 10,000, that would be, <clears throat> be fine. Um, the, the second one does show stuff about 50,000. That's a bit sorry. It says something about between 10 and 50,000. Yeah. It treats it a little bit differently. Right, so when we look at the language there, they say appropriate informal purchasing methods may be used for purchases under 50000 So I wonder if they're de describing a formal purchasing process as requiring a sealed bid. I don't know that for, to be a fact, but that would be my only. Right, even even the micro, the small purchases, you have to get bids. Um, and then they added in the a AP, when a formal purchasing, they actually have a new <laughs> section called formal purchasing source selection materials excess of 50,000 so they they define formal purchasing as 50,000 there so that that looks to me like the sealed bids process I just didn't want to go to 50,000 before we required any bids oh no no the, the, pur the purchasing between uh, 10 so like if you're gonna buy like a set of pins you know, we still ask that you shop it. Like, go sure. you know, look at Amazon, look at Walmart, look at. Try uh, to find the best. Find the best deal. You, you need sure. to shop it every time. Uh, then, but we don't necessarily require them to say, okay, each one was this price. Sure. If it's for the small micro purchases, for the middle range purchases, we do ask that they document the three mm -hmm. bids that they have. Mm -hmm. But it, they can just call three vendors and say, hey, where, where are you at? Now, large purchases, we do require a formal process of putting in the paper, sealed bids, all of that sort of thing, if we think it's gonna be more than 50,000. So it looks to me, and I didn't write the policies, but just kind of what I'm gathering from reading the two together, is they are trying to make that consistent on the formal purchasing 50,000 mark, where there might have been an error in the other policy to not match, would be my guess. just because they added the new language in the new the other policy that says formal purchasing and define uh, mm -hmm. defines that that's what just makes me think that that's just my interpretation so if you change the amount it would not coincide with the other formal purchasing policy, correct? The best way I'm reading it, because it has a new section that says formal purchasing. Mm -hmm. Right, so if, if instead of making it 50,000, we made it 25, but then you're gonna have that gap from 25,000 up to 50 when your formal would take place, correct? Well, we'd have to change the other policy too, probably mm -hmm. to lower okay. that to 50,000, which, okay. I was just trying to understand it because there's yeah. three of them there right. that are kind of. Um, the only idea I would have since this is such an important thing that we want to utilize about is if we removed these two policies and gave it another month for us to feel confident, unless you guys feel confident already that like, I, what I don't want to do is us make a mistake and then be like there be contradictions between these policies 
that. Right. That's why I would recommend we would probably take MSBA's recommendation. They, they've gone through all of this with fine tooth comb. Their attorneys have written all of these. Uh, and then we could, we could bring it back with a more detailed, if we want to look at it, maybe send it back to them. That might take them a month or two to get it all figured out. But I, I recommend following what they've sent us on, on the purchasing side, because they're, they're the ones who pay the closest attention to it, as opposed to, uh, we just do what the law says and follow the policies that they. Well, would there be a difference between us saying we're not ready to vote on this? Can you look it over and reduce the number and make them work together? Make them not contradict and then bring it back and we vote on it? Possibly, I mean, uh, yeah, a, sure, but it might, might take time to do that. But it, I don't know if this, to me, this isn't follow, they're not revising this in order for us to follow a law that just got passed, and so there's a bit of urgency that we need it to be yeah. happening. Right, it, you're right. It, it is just due to uh, align to the new federal procurement rules, <laughs> the new rules that are established yeah, so in the federal. It is. Okay. Yeah, but they're not, it's not a law. Okay. I mean, it's not something we get in trouble if we don't follow. Uh, but it's, they, they just have aligned it to the updated guidance. Yeah. It just bothers me that they took out the language about bids from 3,500 <clears throat> to 50,000. Like it, it just says informal, but I don't know. It just right, and then they added a new section called informal purchasing methods in the other policy. So in the other, I, I think they have just I, identified it different things. So the informal policy it says anything under ten thousand, that you know you can just buy if you need to spend. But anything between ten and fifty thousand now, you still have to go and get bids and that sort of thing. Now you're still supposed to shop it even under ten thousand. You're still supposed to shop. This might not have a bit to get a bit, but like I said, we can do whatever dollar amount you feel like. But I, as we're looking at this, if we're going to change that policy to formal, we need to make sure we change the formal in this one to match. Frankie has spoken about not wanting it to jump to 50, but she's only one person. Is there someone who's like totally fine with it jumping? I, uh, I'm always agreed that there's professionals that have worked through this and understand it way more than I would ever even think to try to understand this. And uh, if we trust MSBA, and that's what they're there for, is to guide us and lead us in, in the direction that we're. And I still think, though, like Dr. K said, there's still going to be bids. We're still shopping. We're still bidding. I think those are just numbers that they're cleaning up to make sure that they meet the federal guidelines and so forth. So. Okay, and I did just find in the second policy the part about small purchases, and it does say obtain bids, quotes, or offers from at least three providers, right. and that's not been changed. No, no. It was in the first policy that part of that was struck out that made me nervous. Right. But now that I found it in here, that it's still there, I feel better about it because yeah. it's not changing things as much as I thought. Yeah, I think that they've just reorganized it a little bit. And they did change the dollar amounts, but um, it's reorganized. Yeah, so for, for me, I, I mean, I'm glad we had this discussion because I was exactly like Frankie and just saw the jump from 3,500 to 50,000 mm -hmm. and thought that seems like a really big jump for informal purchases, mm -hmm. which I assume means just go and buy it kind right. of thing. Right. Uh, I mean, you can buy a lot of things. $40,000. I, I tend to focus on the things that have been changed and I don't always read the parts that they've left alone <laughs> as closely as I should. I get, you know, because it's highlighted where they've right. struck things out and then it's highlighted again where they've added things and, and so I missed that detail in the second one. So I... Right, because the 50000 was originally in that second one. Yeah. That, that wasn't, uh, that's unchanged. Yeah, I see that now. Yeah. I, I think I'm okay with it now. And I apologize that I didn't read it all. Oh, no, no, these are, there's I should a million have, but here. I, there I apologize for not maybe being more clear in my cliff notes there. Well, but, yeah. and there were an awful lot this time, and I was trying to look through everything, and that was just one thing that jumped out at me, like Jeff said. So I wanted to make sure we were all clear and looking at that. But to your point, after discussing it, I do feel better about this. Okay. Um, 
if we are finished with this policy, I have a question about a different policy. Um, I'm, it's the first one, B, D, D, F, U, 1, C, it's the voting, since that's like a big part of what we do is yeah. voting. So I guess I'm confused. It's actually not about what they've changed or suggested. It's actually about the last paragraph talking about video conferencing and like sometimes it says that people can vote and then sometimes it says they can't make it by local. I'm actually just confused by the entire paragraph and I just. Yeah, that one's unchanged. Um, so it says, in accordance with the law, board members will participate in a meeting by video conferencing. They discuss and vote on issues in both open and closed session, regardless of the method by which the vote is taken. Board members participating electronically by other means, such as telephone, may discuss issues and vote as long as the vote is not made by roll call. Which I thought when you can't see someone, you have to do a roll call vote. That's what I thought we were. Yeah, that's been our practice, and I think that's probably a better practice. And so I thought it, and so it says you can't vote by roll call vote. What does it say in the next line? Regardless of whether those votes occurred in open or closed session, unless a district emergency exists in the form of the board is physically present at the meeting, if such an emergency exists, it's in the minutes, but it says, yeah, it just says that if you are calling by telephone, you can discuss and vote as long as vote. So how would someone, I don't understand. The two sentences seem to be saying the opposite. Yes. Well, we can work on this one. Um, I'll go ahead and approve these changes and we can work on this last paragraph and see if we can get something back from MSBA. Do you see the two sentences yeah, she's yeah. talking to? Like yeah, it feels like one says you can yeah. vote by phone as long as it's not yeah. a roll call and the other says you cannot vote, so. Yeah, I, I, uh, now that you say that, I, when I read that I was a little bit confused too, but I'm like, well, there are no changes here. Let's just, we'll focus on the changes, kind of like break the situation. But. Yeah, I just know so, that we've had to yeah. do, in, in the time of me being on the board, when people were getting quarantined or when things were happening, people weren't physically there. And so then we were like always doing roll call votes to make sure that we knew where everyone voted. Um, right, so it says in accordance with law. So I'm, I'm not sure what law they're referring to. So this might, my guess is this was copied out of state statute, put pasted mm -hmm. in here, but I will verify that. So does okay. it, does There's five it laws. Or state statutes mm -hmm. attached to that we can doesn't it <laughs> doesn't this like follow what we were talking about if there's we can more. see and hear you that's like the video conferencing that they're right. referencing right right and so if we can't see the person and they're just on the phone then they can't participate in a roll call vote because we can't see them and know for nope. certain that it's them that's correct this right. is the way yeah, I'm but reading. it says that they can vote. It says they it can says discuss they can issues and vote. and vote, but they can't if it's a roll call vote. I know that's silly. I know. I, I see where so you're I don't know how from. they would vote. <laughs> well, like if you just say I and you're yeah. not really counting how many people. I guess. I don't know. It, it does seem silly. But you would hear yeah. them if they voted no. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a lone mm -hmm. one, no. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think different. Right. I think the key is that the and the board, the minutes states that that person was not here kind of thing. So as long as we cover our own bases. Yeah. Because um, roll call, like if everyone votes aye, or, or one votes no, you just, you don't mention who voted. You know what okay, I mean? You, right. you just say okay. motion carried 5-1 or whatever. Okay. If you do a roll call, then you have to list each individual and how they voted. Okay. And these rules were written way before COVID. <laughs> Yeah, but it, well, yeah, they were made in 20, the last time it was arrived was 2014. Was it? You're correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but we're in different times. Because every meeting, <laughs> even at even at planning and zoning that I am the chairman of, we we had people on Zoom every month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just for some reason I thought we had to do roll call votes when someone like that makes sense. There. Mm -hmm. I think so we started doing that during COVID. Or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that that was something we. Uh, I'm through four of the five uh, uh, statutes, so maybe I'll find it here. Let's see. Uh, oh you read uh, fast. If you read well, <laughs> okay, yeah, it looks like this is, okay, so this looks like it's going to be state statute 610, 
0.015. So if you click on that, that is correct. That one. The way to go, Rick. I tell you, the former social studies teacher knows it all. I tell you, don't ever question. Uh, and it, and it's, it looks like any votes taken during a closed meeting, let's see, uh, let's see, all public meetings shall be open, all votes taken by roll call. Oh, I thought this is it. Uh, okay, when necessary to take votes, roll call. Shoot, that was wrong. <laughs> Mark it down, Lucy. Uh, not the right one. It must be the very last pilot uh, one on there. So 610.020. The state statute. It looks like. I can get back. It's been a while since we've had a little dump of policies to go over. Yeah. This many. Mm -hmm. Well, and sometimes they just totally make sense and we don't really feel the need to discuss them very much. Like there's some in this list. I was like, sure. We need to have a plan for somebody who has epilepsy. We need to. You know, it's like, hello, but. Right, so I did not, uh, I don't see, I'm actually, I, I can't find exactly the, where it says, but I'll reach out and see you, if, if the MSBA can give me the law that that's with. So, so and I, I want to know so that we do it correctly from now on. Correct. But I do think it has a lot to do with, like Lucy said, is recording of the votes. Okay. You know. So do we want to pull that one no. No, or I'm we just go ahead and vote I'm on it and make sure it just gets some clarification? We just want to know yep. what we're supposed okay. to think. Okay. Oh, okay. we'll see what I can find out. Okay. That, <clears throat> that part's not changing. It's, it's been that way. Right, that's the way it's been. Right. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing I was curious about, so there's the public information program that talks about the district notifying the parents, the guardians, so the planning to use a computer science class as math credit, right. the content of the district's trauma-informed, developmentally, developmentally appropriate sexual abuse training for students prior to training, and if it's in the bottom 5% of the annual performance report. What's the situation on this whole like computer science credit transferring as a math credit? Like, why is this a piece of it? And then why, like, what is the trauma-informed, developmentally appropriate sexual abuse training? Is that something that is happening in like in a classified setting? Is that something that's happening in health classes? Is that something that's happening in a counselor session? Or like when is this happening? Right, so a lot of these came out of this last legislative session where people yeah. were very, very concerned about um, schools not being open of what's happening in their classroom and parents not being aware of what's going on. Um, the computer science one is want to make sure kids go in is an idea to promote computer science, that we need more kids in computer science. And so they want to make sure kids knew that they could get their math credit for computer science. Okay. Uh, so that, that was the other idea. The other, the, the uh, trauma-informed sexual one was that we're, we're concerned on how schools are teaching children about sexuality and, and gender and all of those things that okay. wrap around Okay, because it's abuse, it. and so right. I was curious, mm -hmm. like, right. if they were talking about, you know, private, you know, what, Sure, and, and that, that sort of stuff too. And so anything like that, we always try to communicate what our content, what's happening, give parents the opportunity to opt out, work with parents on any of those sensitive topics. Okay. I think that's something this district has done really, really well over the years is just, here's all of our stuff, we're not hiding anything. Please, if you don't want to do that, we'll find you an alternative assignment. Uh, but we, I think we try to be very, very transparent on all of that. Uh, and then the last one, was I've got too many. Oh, times. it was the bottom. Uh, that was like less, I was more oh, curious yeah. about the like curriculum yeah. and content. Like sure. I was, I, I, did, I was thinking, are we not? Not that I was concerned. I was wanting to make sure I don't want to vote on something if I don't know what I'm voting on. Like right. what is happening with this? Yeah, right. and that's that's where all of that. This is a new law that came into place, and really making sure schools are being transparent, which I think we've done without the law. Like I don't know that this. Law changes anything, any behavior, any activity that yeah. we have to do. Uh, but there might be some districts out there that haven't been as open, and this forces them to do that. So, but the computer science one is really 100% trying to recruit kids into computer science. So that's okay. what that's about. Cool. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, I we have two that are district suggested. Yeah. Um, so could you speak a little bit more about the curriculum development? Oh yeah, that one is, they told us that the old one had a chart on it and the chart doesn't work on the new website, so we had, oh. 
fix it. So it's on chart. <laughs> so that's pretty straightforward. And just change the dates, update the dates. Nothing, okay. nothing too crazy on that one. Uh, and, but we do need approval to do that. And then the uh, graduation exercise is really about for former school board members who have served the community have an opportunity to do one of the only perks that school board members get to have is hand their diploma to their children or grandchildren. Uh, and so this will would allow, in writing, uh, school board members to be able to come do that. So there won't be any question of superintendents change 10 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, or different administration. At least it's written down that everyone knows that that's allowable. So we didn't have anything in it. I'm just reading through real quick. We didn't have anything in that policy before about board members at all, did we? No, we didn't. And it was really just called administration at the time. I think we've had former board members mm -hmm. there in the past, but um, just want to make sure everyone's aware that that's an opportunity. So if anybody was a board member in the 80s and they've got grandkids graduating, uh, let's, let's let them know if this is available. Ready for a motion? I am. I, am. I move the approval of the policies as presented. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the policies as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now we have the staffing plan amendment number two. Right at this point, I would recommend we table this. Uh, we thought we'd have a teacher to, to fill. Uh, so our goal is to support um, uh, our classrooms that need para support because we're short paras, and we thought we could combine paras to get a teacher in there to help support. But we we're unable to find a teacher too. So right now, I just recommend we table this, and hopefully, we'll try to find whatever we can find to, to fill it. But we'll, we'll still go with our para plan right now because we are starting to see. That's higher one or two pairs each month, so maybe we'll get some more support. But it really, our, our goal is to get support in our classrooms that need the most support with pairs that we don't have now. So uh, I'd recommend we just table this at this time. So we will move on to graduation date and time. Uh, we can just take no action, or we can yeah. either way, it's probably, it's fine. Right, we know better. Yeah. Uh, at graduation date and time, uh, yeah, Mr. Martin asked about this. We have a conflict on graduation time right now with um, uh, ACT testing. And so just to give a backstory, and I'll turn it over after I kind of know, know what I know, is Saturday morning is graduation and that's the same time as ACT. Uh, so there are some, there could be a senior or two that might want to take the ACT that day. Uh, so they have to choose between ACT or graduation. Um, if we move it back a week, which we've looked at, um, our major issue there and concern really is snow day makeups, uh, because if we would have a really terrible snow and we would need to use time after school, hopefully we don't, we, we haven't had to, uh, that'd be snow makeup. And also that's typically when state baseball is the first week of June, so if our baseball team would make it to state, which we hope that they do, we would have a conflict there. Um, and so if we wanted to change it, and, and then really one thing we learned from COVID was that we can have graduation outside regardless of the weather we just have to be able to move the time mm -hmm. and inside graduation just doesn't work it's it, we have you know 2500 2500 people at graduation and uh, so we're telling you know telling kids they have to pick who can come and who can't and that puts kids in a really bad spot um, and so what we've decided to do is just move the time to find a time that's outside that's not raining and so we use the whole Saturday to do that, and, but or we move it to Sunday night. Now, if we wanted to change the time, I think our best option would be to go to the Friday night prior. Uh, and if it rains Friday night, then we have Saturday morning. If it rains Saturday morning, have Saturday night. If it rains Saturday night, have it Sunday night. And then hopefully, sometime during that time, we can find a time that's not raining and we have graduation outside. Um, I think that that works really the best. And, and just know that inside graduation just it just doesn't work. It, it, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys have ever been part of that. It's, it's a mess. Um, you have to limit tickets, like kids get tickets. Right, yeah. right. And then you've got kids that create conflict with families and who can get the tickets who can't, and then trying to find people who are using their tickets. It's, it's a, it gets to be a thing. And, and Rich, you were at the uh, band concert, did a great job, uh, support the band, thank you for that. And just the band alone and their families filled up mm -hmm. the whole yeah. gym. And we have the band at graduation, and so it, it's just, it's, uh, so I'd recommend if we want to make a change that we need to go the Friday night before that Saturday. 
But Richard, go ahead, I'll turn to you. Well, the reason this concern came up is uh, I know that my son was able to take the test, ACT test, in the last one, and still counted towards scholarship money at Mizzou. And I know in the previous, last year, that there was maybe a, at least one kid for sure I know of that uh, missed graduation because he chose to miss graduation to do that. And I don't think any kid should ever have to have, make that decision. I don't think that we should ever, to me, uh, counterproductive to what are we here for, you know? I mean, we're, we encourage our kids to take the ACT and to do the best they can. And, and uh, so I think that that should never be a question. When a simple moving into later could clarify that. Oh, but not here. There's not here. So the last one here okay. and some of the other schools in the area is June 10th. Some schools, end. their last one is April 15th. But uh, Timberland is running one in Saturday, July. July 15th. Oh, I had no and, idea. Um, I do not know when the cutoff is I for the universities. For oh, Fallon for Zumwalt West is doing it July 15th. We, we have two high school counselors here. Is it okay if we ask them what they know about this? Yes, we can ask them if there's a cutoff date. Do you know a cutoff date for the college update meeting that we went to in September, um, June with the ACT that they will take to qualify for scholarship money? Thank you. I just was trying to find a different solution. No, I well, understand, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I understand that, but we, we want them to get all the benefits they can. And I, so if that's not going to And I psychologically would inform all my students too because I made my kids take it somewhere else at least once because psychologically when you're taking your test here only and you're in that room with your friends there's always that oh he's done already or oh I you know or those kind of things and so I my both my personal children took it somewhere else just for that reason I wanted them to be the only one that they knew in that room and it, and it helps uh, so that's, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I thought there was just that one day, but at the same time, I still don't think we should have to, our kid, when it's, you know, I just don't think we should have to so fit into that Saturday. And, and here's another concern. So project graduation, we really encourage our kids to participate in project graduation. When graduation is on a Saturday morning and project graduation is not until late Saturday night, there's a lot of things that could take place between Saturday morning graduation and Saturday night, which is counterproductive to what project graduation is encouraging. Uh, I'm not saying that people do that, I'm just saying I can see that being a problem. So where, because I remember back in the old days, uh, you would go straight from graduation, and uh, plus it gives parents, I mean, if you're coming, if, if your outside family's driving in late Friday night for a because they have to be here for Saturday morning. That's tough too for outside family to get here on that time too. It'd be even harder for outside family to get in on a Friday night. They yeah. They take off work that Friday. No, I agree. I'm torn. Well, I like the Saturday night, Sunday night ordeal. I do like that. Those two all options. Uh, and because I, I know when I've discussed this, one of the concerns was the heat and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, kind of hot last year. Against remember that. So we're going to move it up to like 9:30 this year. Just to try to beat the heat a little bit. Um, <clears throat> we got a Friday night, it would be the evening time, give us more opportunities to get it in. Because you guys know the pattern in the summertime of weather. You know, that superintendent gets played amateur meteorologist many times a year. Uh, and so uh, the weather time in the summer, as you know, that you get those storms in the afternoon and the evening. And typically during the morning times, there's not as many storms. There are, of course, but not as many uh, as there are in the afternoon and the evening. So we're really just trying to gauge the weather. Like if we knew, guarantee there'd be no rain. Sure, Saturday night would be great, uh, but just we have to have a plan for rain. And I don't think moving inside is our plan. Like that, it just oh, no, doesn't work. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I was someone who took the ACT twice, and the second time I got one more point, and it gave me eight thousand more dollars yeah. total throughout the course. Like just one more point. And did my so I too. understand that, but I also know that they know the graduation date over a year beforehand. Like everyone knows when the graduation date. So it's not a surprise. Did you, can I ask you, did you take that, did you take your last ACT after you graduated like this? I don't remember, okay. but I doubt. And the reason? I, I, would, I would feel like I was probably still in school. And again, I'm looking at it from a psychological standpoint. Yeah. My son had test anxiety. 
him taking that in the summer after he graduated high school, it was a new ball game because it was simply this: who cares? School's out. You're done. Just yeah. go. Just go try it. And he scored that one point extra, just like you did. And it was no, I was still in school. And it was I used computer lab to check. Oh, and it was exactly eight thousand dollars is what he got. Yeah, I was in computer lab and I just like kept checking. Yeah, so, so I'm, I I'm just saying though, I, there's a lot of psychological reasons why that last taste of testing day is really important. I just, I, I don't want to. I, I, I know that there was a, like you had mentioned that it was a single student that made that choice last this last graduation, and I hesitate to make a move for a calendar for a single student, and. I, there's so many other students that are making other decisions with their life, like that don't involve the ACT. And so well, when, I wouldn't want to move everything for kids for the ACT. But have, has the date already been, I'm new to this board, has the date already been set for graduation? Yes, yeah, we approved the calendar in 2021, like November. So like anyone in, like the, in their junior year, they would have already heard when their graduation date. Right, and we've just set the date now. The time has not been identified mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just like pushing on like moving everything just for, I want. But I'm just, my point is, we're not moving anything. It, it's still going to be on Saturday. Yeah, we're just asking the, mm -hmm. later that day. I mean. Uh, I'm more up for moving. I'm, I'm more open to moving the time. I'm less open to moving the day. Right. And that's what I'm at, and that's what I, that's the thing that I brought forth is that if we move it later to the evening, that helps it. Everybody in charge of you have the whole day to prepare, blah blah blah, this and that. And then if it does rain that night, you have the backup date is the Sunday night, if necessary. And I will, I I would even say about the Friday night too, because I I agree with your comment about they would even have more trouble getting there on a Friday night, right? I I feel like. If, if it's a trouble to get there Saturday morning. Right, so my point though is, if it's Saturday morning <clears throat> and I'm an out of town guest and I, and I have my job, I'm gonna go ahead and try to work on Friday and still get there by Saturday morning. But if I know it's on Friday night and that family member is that important for me to be there, I'm gonna take off work on Friday as well. That's my mindset. Yeah. Or well, they could like take the ACT earlier or something. I don't know. I'm but, like, well, I know. No matter what, someone's got to make a sacrifice. I'm just looking at that from a personal standpoint where I know that it helped my son. And I would hate for a kid to, I mean, just put yourself in that kid's shoes. I don't even know who this kid is. I'll be honest. I don't even know who it is. But could you imagine having to make a choice to go, you know? I think it's an informed decision, though. Like, they had known over a year and a half. They could have known a year and a half. Missing your high school graduation. Mm -hmm. As in, which was an informed choice. It could not be though. Yeah, right. It's an informed it, choice that he had to make based upon what the school district did. They've taken all they can that year yeah. of tests, mm -hmm. and it comes down to this last one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I see it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, they knew so when graduation was, but they didn't know they were going to be one point short of a scholarship yeah. or something until after the April test, perhaps. Like, so when is the test over? Like, what time of the day would that test? Noonish. So what time would you be proposing to move it? Well, back to Dr. K's concern about the heat. So like um, seven in the evening. Yeah, seven in the evening. And then have Sunday as backup in case it was right. raining. It just doesn't give us that morning. I forget those, you know, those summer nights where we get Rain, rain, I understand rain. that, but, but, but that'd be usually awesome. not. I guess it was to Monday. So there, so there would be, there's two things. There's the ACT test, there's the, the weather, I guess, and the heat, which is right. one of two. But, so it sounds like having it at a, you would like to have multiple opportunities to have it because of rain. Right, that's fine. And you, I mean, Rich, and would like to, um, give kids the opportunity to take their final ACT if they needed to. Well, I think Greg wants that too, no, don't absolutely. you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can make it work, it's just a matter of how, okay, much, how so, many options do we want to give ourselves? Well, so, let's, right, what do yeah. we want to give ourselves? Yeah. Jeff, you have any ideas on it? I'm not in favor of moving the date. Okay. No. I, I think the date needs to stay for multiple reasons. Number one, it's been approved already. Number two, it's, you know, you move late. I mean, you're in the middle of June. Mm -hmm. uh, 
um, that's you know that's starting to impact lots of other things too. Right. Move it early, and it sounds like those you know we run into other conflicts there. Um, but how do you? So feel generally about, not in favor of moving the date. How do you feel about keeping to the date and doing it that evening? But if the, we just completely get rained out, and just have a backup plan Sunday night instead. Yeah, I mean I, I think it's logical. I'm fine. Saturday night, I mean. And I will, and I will say, I was not on the board when this decision was made, so I'm not trying to throw a, a, a monkey wrench in the spokes of the wheels. But at the same time, after it was brought to my attention, because I, I don't even know was the ACT. I don't even know how far in advance they set the ACT. That's pretty the, consistent. The, a year, time, yeah. like they said, the whole year's worth in so the just, summer. Before. Yeah, so we just need to make so, concerted effort that we try to avoid that as right. at all possible. I think. So. And one thing we will do is monitor the weather, and if we can get it in in the afternoon, it's going to be cloudy and 65 degrees, and we'll, and, but we have storms projected at 7 o'clock, we would we'd recommend moving it up to 3 o'clock and, and, and just try to get it in, which, you know, if you guys remember 2019, uh, we had a great storm uh, that hit us as we were on stage. And Ginger's showing me the radar the whole time as we're watching the storm <laughs> come, come at us. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, Bring sense, our fucking stuff. So we're like, oh, and this they're just true. Run, running this through is the true. day as kids as possible. And, we uh, did and, speed graduate. Right, and cut, <laughs> cut speeches. Well, and, uh, so, so, yeah. I would well, I that's would. a good point. I would suggest that you, you could say flexible between the hours of 3 and 7 based upon the when we get to that time four. <laughs> That we go well, through the day, uh, like the day before, like the weather. You hey, to, Mario, help you. Yeah, I do. And I was well, not really. They told us it wasn't going to rain at it poured. <laughs> right. Then we get this so. one cell that's coming right at us, you know. And I want to just throw out one other thing. Um, do you think there would be any um, pushback or concern by parents of having our alternative date on a Sunday? Because there's lot, there's some churches that have evening services and things like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm just the one. I'm going to say it's clear from this conversation. There's no perfect time or date no. to please everyone. So mm -hmm. that's why I say go with it where it's at. And leave it. That's me. Oh, you would think just leave it at the whatever. Well, just yeah, leave the date and leave the time flexible. And as I understand, it kind of is now. Well, right now we, we try to do it in the morning. Right. First, first thing was to get we it. Plan to in the plan morning. to do it in the morning as soon as we can. But if it's raining in the morning, we'll do it later that day whenever it's not raining, um, or, or Sunday is the, the next plan. Well, what do you guys think about moving it up earlier into the afternoon if the weather is decent and we know it's going to rain in the evening? What do you guys think about that? Is that too much moving around? I think we need to be clear. Sure. Okay. What we did in 2019, we moved it up an hour uh, because we had storms coming, and we just communicated the week or the day. I think the week the day before, like we'll send notification on start the exact start time by x x hour of the day, and we notified parents when that was going to be, and then everyone showed up, and so it worked out. But I think as long as parents know that this is roughly when it's because people get there really early anyway, uh, so it's just. Three o'clock's not ideal because it's probably it's really, hot. really hot, right? It's right. Hot. Well, but you could, I don't know, knowing our weather, weather, it could be nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could have snow. No, not really. <laughs> but we can, we can definitely get that communicated out really quick and tell people to pay attention. Okay. I still really am comfortable with moving everything around for possibly like one or no students. Like, it could be that no students sign up for the January, in the June sent date. Like, yeah, but I don't want to take that opportunity away from them. I think it's important that they get those steps in because they want the best score they can get. And if it takes them until June to get that, I think we should let them have that opportunity to still graduate. Anybody? Feel comfortable making some kind of motion, or I don't know. What are we? Are 
Do we? I don't think that the board sets the time, so we're just giving direction. Sure, that's fine. However you want to do that. Okay. Fine. I mean, have we? Have we ever had a survey of the parents and what? I mean, they're the ones that this is their kids. It's not us. I mean, I don't have a stake in this. I think you get 220 different answers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 200 different answers. <laughs> you know, informally, uh, just people I talked to after graduation things, they say they really enjoyed having it in the morning so they could have family um, that afternoon and then kids could come back and they wanted to talk to graduation. But they really liked being able to have that whole afternoon to not be rushed to get prepped for graduation. They just really enjoy afternoon graduation parties uh, but it, I've also heard that the conflict of ACT is a problem you know so it just kind of depends on your perspective of what you want and but like Jeff said it's probably 100 200 different opinions on, on it yeah so do you board president do you feel as though we need to take a vote on this or do you feel as though we're just giving you direction well are you comfortable with just seeing if we have a consensus or do you yeah want it doesn't to matter to me whatever this would necessarily require a motion but i can because well, to me it kind of sounds like that deanna's okay leaving it the same day but you're flexible on the time but you want it to be defined so people know yeah yeah and you them. are kind of similar jeff you you i was going to say i would make a motion but i don't need to make a motion because i say no Okay, so you're saying leave it as is. Rich? I agree exactly how you worded it for Ms. Wires that uh, the main thing is to keep it the same day. That That's the least that we can do to help the parents that know have known about this for the year. Mm -hmm. But if we're really student-oriented, then we need to make it a point that we don't put a kid in a spot, whether it's we know for a fact that it is, no one should ever be put in that spot, but they have to make a choice between ACT and graduation. And Sarah, I think I kind of know that you feel like that we're could potentially be making a change for a very small or non-existent group. Or no one, yeah. yeah. Um, but no matter, it's going to be a great day, whether it's in the afternoon, oh, in, the evening, in the morning, I'm excited for it, no matter what. And so um, whatever is decided, I'll be there, hopefully, and be in and out and cheering for those kids. So I, this is not the hill I'm willing to die on by any stretch. So I think we just uh, give direction to, the, to Dr. K that we we do agree that it should be on that date, if at all possible, but to at least maybe pull his shareholders in to discuss it and figure out if there is a, a good plan that somebody has. Maybe Dr. Ross, the counselors, maybe they have some kind of input that would be well, we can wordable. Well, we find out. Is there a deadline for when someone has to sign up? For the test? Yes. The big deadline is Jocelyn just waiting for the date. Oh, that's, that's right. That, that's the problem. No, right. Yeah, we have to make it No, she means the, the ACT sign up. The ACT test. Yes. Yeah. 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 So ahead of time. Okay, because so literally at some point we'll know if there's no kids signed up. What's but the, we might already have. Well, we have to get information on graduation. Really? Okay. Yeah. So we're 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 stuck. We're Good stuck there. Okay. But we don't have to put the time on that graduation photo. Yeah. Why? Because they're waiting for the That's what I would like. That, that's what I would like to go to. I appreciate you bringing that up because <clears throat> I'm a big fan of just taking everything back to normal before going. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what it really. Okay, so I think Jeff just changed his mind. Okay. <laughs> yes, I did. I, I guess that that we will do that. Sounds good. So seven uh, o'clock and a Sunday makeup. Day. Sunday makeup day. If it's raining again on Sunday, we just do it Monday. Just keep going each 
stretching it out. Oh, are you yeah. trying to jinx us? It's it's no, it's it was, rain. I just, well, I could just rain know on summer one. patterns yeah. all at the same time, yeah. day after day, a lot of times. Uh, and just want to make sure I had that. It needs to be on Saturday or I won't be there. Oh, so, yeah, sounds you know, good. There oh, go. well. <laughs> You're not graduating. All right. Most of the time it does rain. Most of the time it does rain. Like, right. it, yeah. it really exactly. is just about what are we doing for rains. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Is everybody ready to move to the next item? So okay. we need to Sounds talk good. about the next about next year's too. Is that ACT I, also? I'm sure it probably will be, but if we do it at seven o'clock, just, we'll just do it at okay. seven o'clock. So okay. be what we do. A good right. good discussion. And okay. Did that's we, great. Graduation's a great day. Is that what we're doing the calendar that we decided at um SAT team or no? The calendar for next year? Yeah, the, the calendar's already been approved. Mm -hmm. But it's just the date, it's the not, date, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So okay. so we can run with our Calendar, things we need, you guys have everything you need? Tanya. Okay, Tanya, you good? Yeah, okay, you. great. Awesome. Okay, we will move on to new business, which is bus bids. Yep, we've got a couple bus bids here. There's actually two items here. Our first item is a bus lease for early childhood, which is 100% reimbursable. Uh, so our lease with early childhood buses are up, and so they're taking those back, so we need new buses. So kind of something we really need to do. Uh, and we can't purchase for early childhood. The only way you're reimbursed is through lease. So you, so you have to lease them to get the reimbursement. And that's a total of 125,000 uh, for, for that lease. Uh, and then the uh, second one is in line with our CSIP goals of trying to lower the age of our fleet. To give you the whole backstory of this, uh, we got way behind in our bus lease back in 2008, whenever the economy went way down. And then, it, uh, so then we did a big lease to get caught back up. That lease ran out, then we did another lease, and then you're just paying interest on leases. And so we would, interest rates aren't as low as they used to be. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to lease anymore, and so I'm recommending that we purchase outright. We have about $400,000 in the budget currently for the, for the leases that we have that's rolling off. Uh, so this is more than that, but we can, I believe, with new revenue and just adjusting the budget, uh, and this will come out of fund four, to, to afford the four buses at that, that new price. I can't quite read it, it's at 580, uh, so uh, $580,000. And buses have definitely increased <laughs> in cost. I remember they were like 85,000 bucks, and now we're looking at 145,000. It's like, holy cow. It's like a dozen eggs. Right. Mm -hmm. Are there any grants out there to help Subsidize not on this. There are grants for electric, but they're like three hundred thousand, and you have to do the infrastructure for that, but not for just per unit or buses. That I'm aware of, at least. With the uh, federal transportation bill, is there any money there? Not that I'm an, I'm aware of. I mean, we looked for some of that, but there, there might be something, and, and we don't have to pay for a little bit. We just be approved the bids, and how we get it paid right. for it would be a little bit different. Uh, I'm, I'm just not aware of, of that uh, availability. But, well, yeah. but like you're saying, though, we've already got the 400,000 of the budget, so we're basically going to have to come up with 180,000, and, right. and, and you feel that. We oh, yeah, we that. definitely find that. And yeah. that and we might have to reduce sure. another budget somewhere, but it'll we'll make a balance, and it'll be fine. Um, but yet, we own these buses at least. Correct. And so the four buses that we still have, we would not trade in because we can't get anything for them. They're, they're, they're worth more to us in parts than uh, they are to to sell to somebody. I mean, we might sell one or two, but um, you know, it, we, we would still have those four buses as backup buses if we needed to for, for a little bit, um, unless we find somebody to buy them. But it's not like you trade them in. Honey. Does okay. this get us anywhere close to our CSIP goal? Definitely helps. So we, we would, well, I'm sure it helps. Yeah, we would, yeah. We, would, we would drop off our lowest four, and I think that's 2012 um, and years, so that we're getting a little closer to where we are. What, what if we only purchase three Type C buses? Yeah, we need four. Uh, we, we, the, the goal is to get on a 10% rotation. We have about 45 buses. So if we can start buying four every year, it, that's the cycle we need to be on, mm -hmm. is just continue to purchase four. Uh, like when we got off way before, they were leasing eight, nine, and you're paying all this money in interest. So when you get a bus over 10 years old, especially when it's 
far as our district is and the gravel roads and the wear and tear that's on them, they, they really just don't become dependable. Mm -hmm. And so, so we really need to be on a cycle of purchasing a minimum of four buses a year. Uh, and then some years when we have a little extra money, purchase five. Uh, but we, we need to be on a 10 year rotation of our fleet. I'm just, yeah, I was just nervous about the hundred eighty thousand dollars because I know it doesn't pop up. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that'll be a problem. This will, this we would either just lower the maintenance budget. We'll have new revenue coming in. We have some other building budgets that had some equipment in it this year that they won't next year. That we'll we'll be able to find that fairly easily. I think in the fund for this year. Okay. Um, this is Jeff Bruce. I'll second. A motion's been made and seconded to approve the bus bids as presented. Are there any further questions or discussion? Do those come with bus drivers? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, we wish. Love, we love drivers. <laughs> no, they're self-driving. Yeah. yeah, right. All right, hearing no further discussion or questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Policy first reads. I don't think we have it this month. All right. Great. We'll this month. Good. We'll go to miscellaneous. We have our celebrations. Does anybody have anything they would like to celebrate? I tried it with some drama kids. They went to the Pesky Convention last weekend and they saw some great shows and they were really inspired and they had a great time. So that's always good to hear. Because conventions can be, or conferences can be so fun and inspiring. Anybody else? The Lady Warrior basketball team will be playing in the championship game tomorrow night at 8.30 against Timberland. Mm -hmm. And uh, Coach Logan's doing a great job. And so I went up and watched them last, last night. And uh, they're an exciting team to go watch. They play really hard. Good. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Coach Kenshu. I know that uh, resigning from volleyball. And uh, I'd just like to give him a shout out because he really did a great job with that program the last, I think it's been about eight years he's been a part of that program. And, uh, so I'd like to give Coach Kenshu a shout out because he's done a great job and sort of going to be missed, but it's good to know that he'll be a consultant if needed, so that's awesome. Very good. Our January 26th work session topics. All right, so this would be a closed work session that I'd recommend we have. We'll have some personnel that we'll need to approve, um, and we'll have, um, and we just need to sit down and talk about our negotiations and what we feel like we can, packages we can put together to, to offer staff and uh, as we prepare for negotiations. Uh, if there are any topics that you'd like to bring, we can start organizing all of that. So we'll have just a close. Just, just a close. I don't have any. Unless there's some open <coughs> topics you'd like to talk about this next time. Okay. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Then I'll need a motion to set our next regular meeting. I make a motion to set the next regular board meeting for February 9th. I'll second. There's a motion and second to set the next regular yeah. meeting <laughs> on February 29. That's in 2029. You guys yeah. get that on your calendar. <laughs> February 9th, 2029. Oh, who knows what I'll be doing with it. February 9th, 2000, 2023. 2023. Yes, yeah, thank you. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Sorry, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Like, what are you doing? Our so regular bad. board meeting is set. Now we need to set our closed session. Oh, well, this one has the wrong date on it too. I make a motion to set the closed session to proceed the regular February 9th, 2023. That was oh, my, that was my mistake. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded to set the closed session to immediately proceed the regular February board meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Greg, are we meeting at five? Right, that's what I was going to clarify. Just, what time? Yeah. Is, it's at five work for everybody then? On the that work topic. On the 26th. On the I would get here. I, if the golf course is open that day, I'll get here as soon as I can. That's fine. Well, we can push back the time. No, that's fine. Yeah. Five at six. No, five, five's fine. Okay. okay. It is dark at five. So. What about our people who work full time here? Yeah. yeah. Jeff? Five is fine. Oh, yeah, I was to double check. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's 
adjourn. Now I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody opposes it. We are adjourned. That's all brave things about things.